Shlomo Karlbach said that the rest of the world tells stories to put their kids to sleep, and Jews tell stories to wake ourselves up. I've always been a night person. Partly because I'm a writer, partly because I'm just naturally obsessive. That all changed when I started having kids. And they were morning people, so I had to become a morning person too. And my kids kept me company everywhere and all the time and everywhere I felt awkward. We went to Australia because my wife's from Australia. And in Australia, everyone knows each other and has always known each other. And nobody knew me. I was the odd person out. Nobody knew who I was or why I looked weird or talked weird. And I had this accent that I might as well have been an alien. One night we stayed at my wife's friend's house and my kids woke me up early and their kids woke me up early. And so it was me surrounded by a bunch of kids and they all wanted to hear a story. So in my sort of half asleep morning befuddledness, I told them the story of the goblins. I told them about this boy named Herbie whose parents are astronauts and they take him to a space station where he doesn't know anyone and he builds these little robot friends and together they walk around the halls and lurk in the corners and don't really have anything to do. So because he sees things that nobody else sees, he notices that there are these monsters living in the walls. They're called the goblins and they eat metal and they're eating the whole space station and he's the only one who notices, and when it's too late, only he can save everyone. Here's another story. The Baal Shem Tov, this mystical rabbi who founded Hasidic Judaism, tells a story about a boy, a little boy, maybe four or five years old, who wanders into synagogue at the very end of Yom Kippur, on Yom Kippur night, when the doors of heaven are about to close to all prayers. And the boy doesn't speak Hebrew, and he doesn't know the words to any of the prayers. All he knows is the Hebrew alphabet, which he says over and over again, Aleph, base, gimel, dalet, hey. Aleph, base, gimel, dalet, hey. Aleph, base, gimel, dalet, hey. And the story is that the town had an evil decree placed upon it that the next year would be horrible. But these letters that the boy said float up to heaven and unite into all of the words of all of the prayers. And because of their simplicity and because of their pureness, those prayers save the town from this evil decree and save the lives of everyone in the town. And I've always thought this is a really weird story. I mean, awesome, town saved, yay, but who's this boy and where are his parents? And how does he get off just finding his way into synagogue if he knows the Aleph base. And why doesn't he just pray in whatever language he does know or say what's in his heart, rather than reverting to these letters that like have to mystically put themselves together. But I also think it's really amazing that all of the possibility of every letter and every word is contained in this alphabet. And what he puts out there is the most basic fundamental tool that unites into all of the rest of the world. And that morning, I didn't tell the kids that story. I told them the story of a boy who saves the space station from monsters that only he could see. But I think they're coming from the same place. And I think that's what Shlomo was talking about when he said the rest of the world puts kids to bed with stories and we use stories to wake ourselves because our spirits do need to get back to that olive, that most simple, basic place so that we can create the complicatedness for ourselves and so that we can do it in the right way and so that we can get back to being children walking into the synagogue saying that simple, straight up olive, and then building the rest of the world with it and seeing what's lurking behind all of the walls and making it up for ourselves. Thank <laughs> you.